I was just thinking about people's attitudes towards the police. If a police officer was walking towards you, what's the first thing that goes through your mind? Do you think, oh, this is someone whose job is to serve and protect the public? Or do you think, oh, does this officer think I've done something wrong? And what are they going to do to me if they think I've done something wrong? Now, I think a lot of people would have the second reaction. Obviously, there's other reactions someone could have as well. But I think a lot of people would have that second reaction. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, that's, that's a reaction of fear. Even if you haven't done anything wrong, there's still this fear that they might think you've done something wrong. Now, I know I've had a fear of police since I was little. Um, I remember, oh, I can't remember what his name was, Harvey or something like that. There would be this, in elementary school, they'd, they'd have these assemblies where they'd bring this officer and a talking motorcycle. And uh, they would try to make the police out to be great people. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of cheesy when I look back at it now, but, you know, when I was really little, you know, they, they were really trying, but even though they did that, I still had a fear of police. A fear that they're going to think I've done something wrong. They're going to accuse me of something. And, uh, I just think to myself, that's not, that doesn't seem to be a healthy attitude that we should have towards the police. And, you know, fear is not respect. But there's a lot of people out there who treat it as if it is. There's a lot of abusive parents out there who make their kids fear them. And those parents are under the impression that that's respect. And it's just like, no, fear is not respect. You know? Um, there are husbands who are abusive to their wives, wives who are abusive to their husbands, people who fear their significant other. Yeah, that's, that's not respect. And I think a lot of this kind of stems from a lot of religious beliefs. The fear of God. Oh, if you fear God, you respect God. And it's just like, no, it's, it's like uh, fearing an abusive partner or an abusive parent. You know, that's, that's not respect. I was thinking about, uh, in late 2015, uh, some of you, some of you have probably seen this video, and this is this is old news. I mean, it's 2015. I'm talking about. There was uh, in uh, South Carolina, there was a high school where there was this girl who was texting on her phone, and during class, and the teacher said, "Hey, you you need to put that phone down," and she didn't. And then the teacher eventually asked her to leave, and she wouldn't. So the teacher called someone to take care of the problem and this police officer shows up and does this that's a completely unreasonable use of force that was completely unnecessary that could have been handled quite differently now it ends up that that girl was going, had some family problems. I, I, I think I've read that she, uh, someone died or something. But, I mean, nevertheless, what, whatever it is, that, that reaction, the way the officer treated her, w was just totally unnecessary. And, uh, I was thinking about Live Life 8072. Uh, used to make a lot of videos on this platform here on YouTube. Uh, outspoken atheist. Used to be a reasonable person to talk to. And then he just changed. And became someone that if you disagree with anything that he says, you're a regressive pussy. Taking notes from atheism is unstoppable. I think he has a lot of respect for, for atheism is unstoppable. And uh, yeah, he just totally changed his personality and uh, 
I even made some videos about how his personality changed, because he tried to deny that it changed, and I'm like, well, here's the proof. Here's how you were before. You even would sometimes say you're sorry. You were humble. And then he switches over to this complete asshole mode, mode and it's just... Anyway, um, Live Life 8072 um, had a live stream about the subject of this... This, uh... The way the police officer treated this girl... And he just kept going, but she didn't comply. She didn't comply. No matter what people said, his response was, she didn't comply. And I think to myself, how many people have that kind of attitude? You know, I... And why do people think that black people who... There's been a history of them being treated a particular way and they were slaves way back. Why do you think that black people would be comfortable with having to be submissive to an authority figure? They're the last group that would be comfortable having to be submissive. You know, and I just don't think some people think about that. That's one of the reasons why this whole situation, I mean, whether or not there is actual uh, uh, sy actual systemic racism and not just general racism, and some of them happen to be police officers, you know, whether or not you believe that there's systemic racism or not, this sort of thing affects black people worse than other, co other communities because of the history. You know, they're, they're going to, black people are going to be the ones who are going to least be willing to be submissive. And just, just in general, why should we fear the police? I mean, why do some people think it's acceptable for someone to absolutely submit to someone when you may not even have done anything wrong, but yes, oh, I'm so sorry, officer, I'm so sorry, yes, Amasa, yes, Amasa. And that's what it feels like for, for a number of black people, as if they're having to submit, submit to the master. Yes, Amasa. Now, I'm not saying people shouldn't comply, but there's a point, there... A bad apple ruins it for the bunch. And there are some officers out there who expect complete submission. And as we can see with the George Floyd situation, there are some officers who they'll even stand around and support someone having to, to do full submission, and even full submission isn't necessarily enough. You know? Um, yeah, there, I think this is a problem. People shouldn't have to be absolutely submissive to, an, to another person. You know, that's something that should be, it should be looked at as an abusive relationship. You know, someone shouldn't have those feelings every time they see a police officer. If, so, if a police officer is walking towards you, you shouldn't suddenly have that fear, oh, yes, Amasa, in your head, right? That's not the relationship we should be having with the police. So there's, there's a lot that needs to be fixed. You know, as much as I hate some of the things that are being said, and people saying we should abolish the police and such, it is getting the conversation going. And it doesn't look like the things that Trump pushed forth are going to be very effective. I haven't read through the entire text, so I can't say for sure. But, I mean, at least there's something kind of being done. But we need to have a different attitude towards police, and that's only going to happen if the way that police officers operate is different. Now, I understand that right now, 
there's tons of police officers who are quitting. They're resigning. They're like, I, the, the attitudes that are towards them now, it, there's a hostile attitude towards police. And a lot of them aren't putting up with that. Now, maybe some of them are the ones that, uh, that only joined because they want to exert power over others. But there's, there are others who just, they're trying to be the best people they can and they just can't take that, that pressure. So it's, it's kind of a messy situation right now. You know, another thing I think about is, you know, besides this notion that people have that we should, that fear is respect somehow, I think about how this country has a higher percentage of its population in jail or prison than any other country. And we just sort of, oh, well, so what? I mean, and just like, why is that acceptable? Why is putting someone in prison for victimless crimes acceptable? Why is the war on drugs acceptable? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think the war on drugs is racist in nature. Um, because of who it disproportionately affects. I mean, different cultures attract different recreational drugs. Yeah, a lot of changes need to happen. We need a lot of reform. I don't think throwing the baby out with the bathwater is the, is the answer. Um, but a lot of reform needs to happen. There needs to be reform in our legal system. There needs to be reform on the police. There needs to be reform in uh, how we rehabilitate people. Um, there needs to be a lot of changes. I guess I don't know what more to say right now, but uh, so uh, banana. <laughs>